Hello, Daily Tech here, and this is an update video to my previous setup guide that outlines the changes of the PS Move service from Alpha version 5.0 to Alpha version 5.4. There are actually more changes what I've listed here, but these are the ones that will noticeably impact your setup and play experience. Again, I'm not a developer of the software, I'm just merely reporting what has changed from my previous setup video, which is linked on the screen now. In version 5.1, the third controller graphic is removed from Steam VR. And also there's a new Vive touchpad emulation. Let's get into the controller graphic removal right now. Looking at my screen here, you'll notice that the config tool shows all three controllers. Also in Steam VR, all three controllers are shown here as well. That's what we need to change. And this is the reason why you see that floating controller in the Steam VR home screen and also in some of the games as well. First thing you'll need to do is shut down everything related to your VR setup. Then go find your Steam VR settings file and open that up. In here, we're going to add a line right above Steam VR, and I'll show you that right now in just a sec. This is the line you're going to need to add right here. This address is the MAC address of your controller. That can be found in your config tool. We want to go to controller number two, which will typically be the one you want to hide, because that'll be the one being head tracked, and enter in this device serial right here. And notice these two are the exact same. Once you have saved the text file, be sure to reinstall your PS Move service drivers. And that'll be done right here. Once that's done, you can restart all of your VR software. Now when we start Steam VR, you're going to see that only two controllers now are shown. For the Vive touchpad emulation, you need to press and hold the PS Move button then move your controller side to side up and down as you see in the video here. This option is enabled by default, so no configuration is needed to get this working. In alpha version 5.2, there's a color conversion that's added to help reduce CPU load. This will decrease your CPU usage by about 5-10% to depending on how many cameras you have connected. This change is just to help with performance in general, but also reduces the amount of black screen issues that you'll experience if you are experiencing those issues because that seems to be tied to CPU usage. The next change to note here is a pretty big change and that's to remove the HMD from the calibration process. First I'll show you what the new calibration process looks like, then I'll show you how to do it in game. The calibration process is going to work the exact same way as it did in the previous video. Just follow your points 1 through 5 as per usual, but the difference this time is you no longer need the HMD up on the calibration mat. Once that's complete, you'll see the controller floating on the screen and you can check to make sure it's tracking properly. A new added feature as well is these red boxes you'll see on the screen. If some of the lines get painted in red, that means that tracker can no longer see your controller. This is especially handy if you have your camera in strange spots and you can check to see if you have any kind of dead zones. One thing to note is that you'll no longer see the HMD in that test tracking window. This is normal and quite a bit different than the previous versions. Once in Steam VR, you'll see the controllers below you now. That's normal and you'll experience this every time you start up Steam VR. You'll also see the cameras down below as well. All you need to do is pull the controllers up to your face and have the trigger facing directly towards the front and then hit both start and select buttons on one of the controllers at the same time. This should straighten everything out for you. Now if you look around, you'll see the cameras should be up top and the controller should be right in front of you and tracking properly. In Alpha version 5.3, you're now able to manually select the controller bulb color from a drop down in the controller settings menu. This is especially helpful if a color is giving you tracking problems in your play environment. Also, there's a new filter added so you can throw things in game. This means no longer just dropping things in front of you when you try to throw. It's been a pretty major update since a lot of games require to actually throw things. Just make sure you don't throw the controller. This is of course enabled by default. Also, there's a bug fix for the PS Move navigation controller. Before, this was giving you a problem while connecting it by USB. In Alpha version 5.4, the test tracking option will now allow you to track the selected controller. This means you can now test the tracking of each controller independently. Another improvement is that when doing the color calibration, you can select the controller by color to help reduce the amount of time spent calibrating. They've also added additional logging for debugging purposes and a bug fix for some people who have had problems with SteamVR locking up after a PS Move service upgrade. 
Now here's a quick demo on how the last update speeds up the calibration. All you need to do is select the controller you want and then calibrate it in each one of the trackers. As you can see it's selected by color and each one lights up independently. This way you don't have to do all three controllers in all three colors with all your trackers. And of course, a special thanks goes out to everyone working on the PS Move service. This is a fantastic piece of software and the development team has been absolutely amazing at adding new features, fixing bugs, and going out of their way to make sure this is the best Vive alternative available. Thank you.